Good morning. It is another day of working in the shop. We are working on the bombing today. Tom Tom is off. Where's he at? Scout camp He's or camping. something? But we still have a full crew today. We've got Lizzie. I'm here. We've got Jake. Howdy. We've got Red. Hey. And Peanut. Look at you. You're going to be helping today. All right. So what we've got to do today, there's a couple things. We're going to put one crew siphoning the gas out of here because we've got some cutting to do. And I want to fill that gas tank with water. Why water? Because it's the opposite of gasoline. So if that was a water tank, we would siphon the water out and fill it with gas before we started cutting. But since it's a gas tank, we're going to fill it full of water. Empty gas tanks are the most dangerous. So we're going to be pulling this motor and transmission out of here. We're going to be pulling this driver's seat out. We're going to be pulling out this front gearbox because we're going to be replacing it, upgrading it, possibly ruining it. I don't know. We're not gonna ruin it. Peanut wants to ride in this thing so bad. I'm getting straight to work by doing the first thing, taking the driver's seat out. More tech. All right, we finally got that out of there. I knew that was gonna be a little bit of a job, but the plasma cutter quit working about three quarters of the way through, so we had to finish it with a sawzall, which actually, I think, worked better. What's next, Rhett? Uh, we're getting this motor out, transmission. All right. Let's get to work. Okay, back. Okay, folks, we're gonna do this. That has caught some debris over the years. Hey, tools, that's always nice. This all needs to be unbolted, Rhett. We need this out, we need this out, we need this cut out. I wish the plasma cutter worked. Like stupid horse food. We got a lot done today. We're moving in the right direction. This thing is still a mess. So we're just gonna get this cleaned out and we'll be back tomorrow like this. Good morning, it's another day of working in the shop. Yesterday, Lizzie and Rhett got this all cleaned out and washed up, and now we can see all the rest of the stuff we need to get cut off of it. We about had the pressure washer after she was in. Oh, was she a mess? I was a mess. <laughs> all right, I came in early and marked all of the areas that need attention. So any of these that are sprayed, they've got to come off and get polished smooth, just the silicone. And once you get these all polished smooth, you're going to be filling in all the holes. They're going to be all welded up. You can run both welders if you want. Okay, now, you might be wondering what I'm doing. I'm not doing any of this. I got volunteered for a youth group to take them up to Tokerville Falls and show them around. They're from, I think they're from California. So Jamie and I are going to go up and help with that, and we'll be back. Okay, guys, make you proud. Yeah. See you later. Yeah. All right, let's get to work. Sounds good. So to do this job that Matt left us with, which is to cut off all of this, get it looking all nice, weld in all of the holes and everything like that, we're gonna need some flapper discs and some cutoff wheels and some welding tips. Let's make sure we have enough before we get started on this big project. Here's our drawer of discs. We're basically all out. So let's run to Sholson's and get a few things and we'll be back to get started on this. All right, we are up here at the beginning of the Tokerville Falls Trail. Here is the youth group that I was talking about. It is a beautiful day. What do you think, Jamie? It's going to be awesome. The falls should be great. What are you driving? In. I'm driving the Morver with the scanner bar on. I'm driving the banana there. All right, where are you all from? San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. All right, is this your first time in this area? Yeah. All right, so we're going to be taking them somewhere they've never been before. We're going to go do a little swimming. I forgot my swim trunks. You've got them on. You always go in your jeans. I do. I probably will. All right, you guys excited? Yeah. All right. We got the list of stuff we need, and we are on our way to Schultz's. 
Yeah. What's up? I have a list. Oh, those ones? Yep. Okay. Uh, all right, that is everything on my list. Okay. Got it? Got it. Thanks, Rowdy. We got everything we needed except for welding tips, so we're gonna have to figure out something like for that, but we are headed back to the shop. There's a big old swimming hole down there. All right, I'm going in. I got it. Is that a wallet? Wallet! <laughs> Is it cold? We are back in the shop, ready to work on this. Rhett, what are you ready to do? I think are you gonna, gonna start cutting? Knocking these things off first. Okay, I will try and figure out how to get this stuff off. So you start cutting, I'll start peeling. combined it's really cool and has a smaller tip so we have these tips and I'm able to use this welder. Um, Rhett cleaned up all of the holes so I can see them they're nice and shiny so I'm gonna go ahead and weld them up. All right that was awesome water's a little cold. Jamie's a huge party pooper. Just got done welding all of this up. Hopefully there are no holes missed, so I'm gonna double check. I just finished up grinding all the welds down. Everything's cut out. So we're gonna push it back out and pressure wash it again. The light. I'm gonna have you back that off of there. Why? Because it's hard to get into. Uh, you get in. Here, I'm gonna boost you. We're gonna have to boost you in. Um, I can't reach the pedals. Slow, really slow. All right, we're heading back out of there. We got a little bit of change of cast here. Hi. Jamie's back there somewhere. Is it lunch time? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna head back. We're gonna let these guys go to lunch. We're gonna go to lunch ourselves. Then we're gonna check on Lindsay and Rhett, see how much work they got done. Say bye, everybody. Bye. We made a little bit of a mess in the shop, so we're gonna clean that up, but I'm glad that Matt took a little bit long so that we can get this all finished. Hopefully it's up to his standards of where he wants it. All right, we got everybody back to safety and now we're gonna split ways, go do our own things. Look at that. Looks good. All right, while I was gone playing, these guys are here working. They did a good job. I really appreciate it. The day is over. We'll be back tomorrow like this. Good morning. It's another day of working in the shop. We are working on the snowcat today. Lizzie is off. This is one of the days she doesn't work. Rhett isn't feeling well. Kind of been going around. <coughs> so today it's just me and Jake. We are going to continue to work on this. We're still in the teardown phase. We're going to get this flipped over, get the axles off from it. It's like the jacuzzi feature. So in case you can't remember, we took all the gas out and then filled the tank with water because we were going to be grinding and welding and plasma cutting around it. We did that so we wouldn't explode. And now we live to regret it. <laughs> there.
It's a pretty color. It's almost drinkable. That's the color you want your gas water to Yes. Yeah. Is more water? Oh, hello. Sorry, fellas. Challenger lift, but that's what we did. All right, you gotta figure out how to get these off of here. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we know that this front axle is in line. This is the this is the approximate line of where the front axle is. So we know that the center line of the front axle is roughly between here and here. So that all needs to be sanded down to bare metal. Okay. So in a shape about like this. And then all the way across, that's all gonna need to be bare metal. Okay. Straighten up. Okay, those are exactly, those are like zero offset wheels, both of them. So that means that this measurement is our measurement. I think we want these tracks 51 inches. So these are the new wheels we're running. These are 13 inch. This originally had 10 inch wheels. Then that fateful night when everything went to crap and we had to fix it before we went to Indianola, we, uh, I got some axle stubs and I welded them on right now. And there was a prediction that those were going to break off. They were never going to work, but it's hard to tell from here, but it looks like they're working. <laughs> That's all going away. We're putting beefier axles and we're putting these 13 inch wheels. We're going to be running 24 inch tall tires on this. Right now we've got 18s. So that's a pretty big lift for the killer bee. Little baby bombies growing up. <laughs> Those tires should be coming any day too. Yeah. Yeah, heffy. This is getting mild star tires. Really? Mm hmm Some Patagonias. Yeah. <laughs> Batteries installed. Just that nice. easy. Yeah. So these axles have this torsion bar system on them. And there's a little bit of twist right there, you see that? Yeah. When this is setting on its wheels, those are setting on the bump stops. So they're just maxed out doing yeah. nothing. They're maxed out doing nothing. You can see this one's still maxed out doing nothing. It, it, it doesn't even want to spring back. Yeah. Suspension. In the work that we were doing, we found out we don't need the suspension. So to simplify it, to make it light and strong and simple, it's gonna eliminate suspension altogether. It should feel better. Probably won't feel any better. It should feel better with a bigger diameter tire. Shouldn't it be smoother? And the track's gonna be a little bit longer. Not a lot, but a little bit longer. Here's a question. This is gonna be awesome. All right, I've gotta run. I've got a couple things to do. I'm gonna leave Jake here to handle this. And if you come to an impasse, just reach out. Okay. I'm about to get to chopping on the killer bee. Should be fun. So Matt got me a piece of scrap metal. And what we're going to do is I'm going to weld this piece of metal across the tracks there so that when I cut it off here, I'm not going to have like a floppy cage. I'm going to be able to like take this track, put it on the ground and wheel it out the shop in one hopefully one piece. So yeah, so right now I'm just gonna weld this on over the bars and then we're gonna get to chopping. Looking good. Improving. Welding's actually kind of fun. I've always wanted to weld, but uh, working as a kid in like muffler shops, my uh, superiors were like, you go back to changing oil. So I've never gotten to weld. So now 
uh, that I got my little support bar welded up. I'm gonna see if I can unbolt this axle over here. Um, if not, I'm just gonna chop, 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 chop this all out, keep this frame rail on, and we should be able to pull the wheels off in one unit, slide it out the door. All right, you wanna get this? All right, so got a little bit of smudge um, from just all the terrain that they've driven over. It's kind of caked in mud. I'm gonna have to dig these bolts out and then we can pull them out. I feel like, what is that, an archeologist? Indiana Jones. I'm like unearthing ancient bolts from past recoveries. To or chop not. or not to chop? What would Matt do? All right, so instead of battling those uh, nuts and bolts, Matt said, when in doubt, derby it out. So I chopped it off. That's ridiculously quicker. Yeah. Yeah, this type of tool compared to like that cutting wheel just chop suey. Alright, so we got our six pieces cut off of the axles. Now we got these two front ones that we got to figure out how to get that casing off and how to chop those off. And then after that, we're off to the races. Crud Blaster 3000. All right, so I think I have solved the mysteries of this axle. We unbolted all them bolts, and then we got the, whatever guide this is, I think it is a guide that the tracks go over. Uh, I'm not 100% on that. But now that we got that, we just got two more bolts. This will pop right out, and we can chop it off. Right. Oh yeah. All right, the axles are officially chopped off. The only thing holding it up is this little strap. So we're gonna take this off now with the lift and then we're gonna clean up this whole tub. Goodbye, Bombi. Let's go clean up our tub and get it ready for sandblasting. And I'm walking around without crutches now. I'm healed, sort of. So I'm gonna try to help out. So we got a call for a bug, probably in the 60s, old school bug that's stuck in a junkyard somewhere. So we're gonna go lift it over. We're gonna huh? take the world's largest. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna take the world's largest forklift to get it out. front axle is going to be, we're going to have to move it further forward than I want it to because I can't attach it to the gas tank. No. You need some kind of barrier or support? No, I just don't want it welded to the gas tank, that's all. <laughs> that's pretty basic. Yeah. I have my rules. You have some standards. Yes. Axles welded to gas tanks are out of question. The spacing we, was, we were looking for was Right here. 27 inch spacing. We'll put this one exactly where the other one was. Right? And then the next one at 27 inches. What happens if we go 28 inches? Will that throw everything? Mm -hmm. 
I get to make up the numbers. Oh. My rig. <laughs> yeah, let's take a break from this for a second. Yeah. Just take a breather. I think we're both okay with that. Yeah, I think so. Good morning, it is another day of working in the shop. We're working on the Bombi, in case you can't tell, it's there on the floor. Well, pizza of it, all that's oh, left. <laughs> we're gonna get started on this. Hopefully we can get the axles on it today. We're just gonna get after it. So one of the things we've gotta do is we've gotta narrow these axles. And that's good because we'll get to take the bow out. Hold that up so the yeah. camera can see the bow. The camera's gonna show you a bow. You might need to like aim down. The, I yeah, know, I can see it. Can you see that bow? Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So. By cutting the section out of the middle, we're gonna take that bow out, which is good because we don't want any uh, camber. Ca camber on these axles. So we chopped one and a half already. We have a plan for that. We're assembling one right now so we can figure out how far it is from flange to flange and we know how much to cut off the tubes. So we're gonna use this to press on the inside. This is a really tight press fit in there. It's not very strong, but it doesn't have to be because then we're gonna weld them together. We put the hubs on here so we can get an accurate measurement. We're going to figure out exactly how much out of the middle we need to cut to get those marked. And 51 get cut. inches, right? We want flange to flange, 51 inch wide. On all but one of them, we so. The brake one in the back needs to be narrow. 50 and a half, yeah. Okay. No, we have wheel spacers on there. It needs to be 46 and a half. Oh, do, oh, oh yeah, because of the brakes. We'll build that one last after okay. some calculations. Yeah. These trailer caps should have a little like, they should be rolled in so that they can start, but they're not, they're straight. So I have to do this little shrinking technique to get them in and they still don't go in very nice. I think we got the build a trailer axle kit. They didn't just come as an axle, you have to put it together. DIY trailer kit. Kind of. I'm gonna mark this at 51 and then we're gonna pull the 20, other. Just do, cause we're gonna cut it. Let's just cut out the whole metal. Do 26 and a half or okay. 25 and a half. Okay, I would cut these one eighth of an inch short. So, we so that we have that nice little. gap to fill in. Okay. I think we talked about this, but the old Bombi axles were torsion axles. They had some rubber torsion spring. These are gonna have none. We're not gonna have any. But we've also established that the old Bombi axles were setting on the bump stops, which was steel to steel. So we already know what it's like. So you really didn't have any suspension before. Mm -hmm. We're going bigger tires. We can air them down lower. We'll have a little bit of tire suspension. If anything, this will be better because you won't have that upspring off the bump stop when you hit a nice bump. Here. So these should press in pretty tight. There's a weld seam in here, right there. And this is a little bit thinner pipe, so I'm hoping that I can overcome. Look at that. Now get a hammer and hit right there. Not a dead block. Yeah. A lot of trust in Jake there. Yeah. I don't know, he's hitting really hard. Nick, Nick, really, really, really close next to your head. <laughs> Let's go from a different okay. angle. Don't, don't hit as hard. Yeah. Pick up on it. Yeah. Whoa. Too much. Okay. Maybe. Okay, let's measure this. Let's measure. Measure we're gonna, it. We're gonna measure it this time. We're gonna measure it. I don't even know how to do a short sound there. Measure. Measure. We're gonna measure it. Measure. <laughs> no, that could not be any more exactly on 51. Unless it was a little bit that way. <laughs> any more perfect unless we did this. Yeah. 
We're going for 51, man. 51. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> so they have an alarm on them. How do we make sure the arm's like the same? Boop, 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 like that, you know? Oh, yeah. How do you? I don't know. That's. Okay. And just make it so. Clamp one down and whale on this one. Yeah, let me get some clamps. Let me find a whaler. Oh, I'm hacking for that. Let me, let me help you. Help me. I'm gonna do a little friend. Oh. Look at that. You got some. Uh -huh. We're getting close. Are we getting close? We're getting close. How are we doing? Let me look down here and see. Oh, just a couple more tappies. Oh, yeah. That looks, I'm going to give it one more. Zinging you? Got me. Alright. Look at these cute little things. Ooh. 51 inches. <laughs> Dang, dang more precise. Okay, precise. hold on. Leave that leave that on there. This is we're gonna You're gonna weld it right now? We're gonna weld it on here, but let's let's just check and see how we're doing. Oh man, I'm at point one. And I'm at point four. What does that mean? It means we're bent. Or it means one of these is a zero. Down. Or it means we're super close to not bent. That's is the better way. Oh, let's measure what these are. Let's measure what one with camber in it is. I'm 1.7. And I'm the yeah. other way, 0.1. So there's like close to two degrees of camber in these. That one's at 0.1. That's pretty dang good. And we're still at 51. Okay, weld that thing. We got a lot of comments about this. There is a lot of questions and, and people wondering what we're doing. So one of the comments we got a lot of was, why don't we just buy a new one? Tom, why don't we just buy a new one? Because it's expensive and that's not what we do. And they don't make what we want. We need something that's small and super powerful. And that's not how snow cats come. They come small and super fragile and big and super tough. And we just wanted to take the toughness of a big one and the smallness of a small one and smash them together. So that's what we're doing. So think of this as like the tugboat of snow cats. How you doing, Ed? Good. It's gonna be hot today. Is it? Yeah, like you today. Uh, yeah, we're finally getting summer. It was really late coming, but it looks like it's here. What do you think? We made our first axle. We still gotta weld it together, but that's how wide they are. Is that wider than the old one? Same width. Oh, okay. Well, for good. Keep going. Keep going. I think that's good. All right, we're just going to make another one of these, and then we're going to make a custom one that's a different width because we're doing different things with it. We'll show you. I think we have about three quarters of an inch of tolerance to play with on axle width. So the fact that we're getting them all exactly perfect isn't, the tracks aren't even gonna know it. Oh, push stop right there. Um, it was close, but it bounced back a little bit. So. Okay, let go. That's, that's, oh, that's zero right there. That's real. That's zero right there. Okay. Okay. Let's check left and right, and then get a tack right in the middle of this thing. Right there is where I'm going to go on both sides. Ninety-five and three eighths. Ninety-five and seven sixteenths. So sixteenth out. Let's see how the square looks. Oh wow! This is. So the square is telling us a different story than what that just yeah. did. I don't know how square this thing is. 
But if I was to guess, this square is more accurate because it kind of looked crooked. That looks pretty Hey, that pulled you right on. Okay, what are you thinking? That's it, that's our standard. Everything gets measured off of that. Okay, 77 and an eighth. Seventy-seven and one eighth. Okay. Maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, seventy-seven and an eighth. I think that's square. If we just build the rest to this. To this. Okay, Lizzie, come put attack. I need from here all the way out here at this edge to right there. Same thing here. So just. Okay. So I do these two first. Ping pong, ping pong, and then middle workout. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. So the reason this axle is going to be narrower is because it has a, it's a, going to be a braking axle also. So we'll have brakes on the drive sprocket and brakes on that last back axle. So this is still going to be brake based steering. I know a lot of you wanted hydrostatic drive, but it, it doesn't warrant the complexity like the, the duty cycle, the service requirements, whatever. This machine doesn't require, it just needs brakes that work. Breaks it all, it would be really good. Yeah, any, any sort of way to steer it and stop it would be really amazing. And you're gonna have front and rear brake, mm -hmm. which is yeah, I was more than two times as good as what I had before. Yeah, I, yeah, I would Each say. Each end will be better. And I'm gonna say that it's 11 better. times better. 11 times. Yeah, because 11 times better. it's not hard to get better than absolutely no steering. <laughs> which should be good enough. We're exactly two and a quarter, like, Two and a quarter or two and a half? Two and a quarter, exactly. Okay. So four and a half inches. So we got to go 51 minus four and a half. 46 and a half. Yeah. So you got to take two and a quarter inches off of 25 and a quarter. Well, we were measuring from here 22 and three eighths. Do we need Minus to... two and a quarter. So that's 21 and three eighths, 21 and an eighth from this flange. Okay. So what is our cut line? I've yeah, lost. Eight. 21 and an 8. 21 and an 8. Okay. I hope, I hope that's good enough. Oh, it's going to be. Corn. That's the corn kernel, and that's the corn cob. They don't even, they don't even care. They didn't even think it was funny. Maybe it's because they got their mufflers on. No chuckles, nothing. What are you talking to me? This is the corn. That's the corn cob. It's not funny. <laughs> it's got the juice. It has the juice? One quarter. Is this one an inch drop? Is this one an inch short? This should be a 51. We're a 48 and a half, so we are two inches short. We needed to take two and an eighth on both sides. These are both an inch long. Well, let's see if we can get it apart. If we can, we can cut all of it off of one of them. Oh, yeah. There you go. Sometimes you do the math and it still goes on. That's it, right there. That pipe's really thin. Everybody went to lunch. I was so excited about working on this, I stayed and worked on it. And then Coley walked in the door and he said, Matt, did you film anything while we were at lunch? 
And I said, no. I've got these tacked in now, but I'm gonna eat lunch because they brought me some lunch back and then we'll get back on this. So this is your tensioner, Axel? Yes. I think this is oh, where we Oh, so want. how you're tensioning it is you roll this back. Yeah, okay, clip, clip one of those on there. Barnes four wheel drive makes lots of parts. Uh, they mostly focus on like Jeeps and Toyotas, like off road rigs. They don't really specialize in snowcat stuff, Bombi stuff, but they do have stuff that's going to fit our Bombi. So we're coming out here to look through our stuff and see what we got. So we can use something like this modified because I'm not going to use this on anything. What about these? These have no Those home. Work. Let's modify these. We'll take these in there. All right, I'll put these back. So thanks to Barnes, we have some of the gussets that we need to make the killer. Is it the killer bomby or the killer? I think it's the killer. bomb B, like a bomb, but a B. But killer. Killer bomby? The killer. Killer? Killer bomby. Killer bomby. Killer bee. Rhett and I were sent out here to take the tires off of the off-road trailer. I don't think they're the real tires that we're gonna put on it, but. It's just for looks. This goes on the back axle, but that's how they fit. What do you got going on? Oh, lovely. He's not much better. <laughs> that's pretty strong. Shoot, it falls off. It never does. It never does. So another thing we get all the time when we're working on our projects and we show a lot of welding, we get a whole bunch of comments. We're talking, I don't know, dozens. That thing's gonna be too heavy to move. By the time you get done welding it all together, it's gonna be heavier than a tank. It's not gonna work. You always say that and you're always wrong. In this case, it actually is a tank, so it'll be exactly as heavy as a tank. Mandelbaum, Mandelbaum, Mandelbaum. <laughs> you don't get the reference, Tom? No, Mandelbaum? Yeah. Is he Mandelbaum? Mandelbaum, Mandelbaum. <laughs> That's going to be the track tensioner. I bet you those are going to be hot. All right, we're putting this temporary turnbuckle in that's lacking all the properties of a turnbuckle. 
but it will be. It won't turn or buckle. <laughs> buckle, if that's what we need, is something that won't buckle. Mm. We're dealing with approximates here. It's going to have the Carolina squat here. There we go. Oh. There we go. All right, let's put the tires on this. Oh. I see the excitement. So you should never oh, hold your axle on with hose clamps. This, but is, this, this is temporary. Is but if you do, use two of them. On each end. Hopefully that'll hold this axle in. Let's flip this over and see how it looks. Are you sure? Yeah. It's not gonna slip off? Look out, everybody pay attention. Down let it slow. go. Don't like don't throw a disc out or nothing. Let it go. Oh, oh it's high. Smokes. Well, he's oh. at 30 watts. That is so flipping tall. So 31s, we're gonna have 24s. Plus so. plus a couple inches of track. I love this clip down. So it might end up that high. Well, it's gonna be like 26s. That's a tall bombie. <laughs> All right, we've got the Killer B rolling on its temporary Milestar Patagonias, and we can push it in and out of the shop now, and that's good because we need to make room for the rental Jeep because Mama is tired of hopping in it. I can't wait to have some steps to get in and out of the Jeep because us short people, we need something. Here, let me show you something. Stay right there. Jamie, can you close that garage door? <laughs> Sheesh. You're going to make me do that? <laughs> well, I grabbed it. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not as agile. Ta da! We got it. So now that we've established that Jamie's not very tall. <laughs> Let's get the rental Jeep in here and help solve some of her vertical problems. All right. Okay, here we go. This is like the real Bombi. Turn. Turn. It won't. We're it turning. won't. Turn. It's going slower than I thought. I think Jake's on the brakes. Yep. We got Jake brakes. We got Jake brakes. Got Jake brakes. Ah. <laughs> Dude, this is That's awesome. Sweet. This is going to be so good. Look at that. You're gonna hit zero snow if it was up this high. Like the tracks would be it. We were riding the backwards. These wheels are not the right wheels. These are comically big. Um, it had little tiny ones. Where is one of those? Comically small. So this is a 12 inch wheel. We're upgrading to a 13 inch wheel. The tires haven't come yet. They're gonna be here Friday, I think. So we got all the wheels to put on. So we got these. This is approximately how tall they're going to be. So this is the up move from this to this. That's a Corvair wheel. 1964, do you know how you can tell? By this shape right here. 64 wheels are unique. Well, I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin my seat, like, cause I have to slide off of it. So I try to kind of jump from there, but I'll show you how I get in. I have to put one leg up, grab this, and hop in. It's gonna be awesome to get these installed. Thanks to Tanner from Rock Slide Engineering. So we've been testing these on Hefe's Bronco. Well, Hefe's been testing them. <laughs> It didn't even dent it in. Down. Oh yeah. <laughs> These are awesome. I've slid them across a lot of crazy rocks and they're held, held together very well. 
So we took the rental Jeep out the first day on the maze. Yeah. And Jamie was so nervous the whole time and uh, she didn't want to damage it. So when she saw those on Hefe's Bronco, she said, let's put those on the rental. So I'm not really a bolt-on guy. I'm more of a hack and weld and grind and hack and weld. So I got a little bit of anxiety here because these have to be installed with a process and in the right order. Rock Slide Engineering makes it very easy. They make bolt-on brackets, so all you do is take off certain bolts, bolt your bracket on, bolt your rock slider on, and you're done. I take a piece of metal, imagine what it needs to be shaped like, I cut it out, and then I weld it on. That's the difference between Matt and myself. I can't do that. <laughs> Everything that they put on so far is the casings and the mounts for the steps. This is the actual slider. This is the armor to protect it and, and it's replaceable so you never damage your actual casing. All right. Great. All right, I like that. All right, we got those installed. It wasn't too hard. It looks like it's a quality product. Let's see if they work. As intended. All right, we need this out of here so that we can get the killer bee back in here because we have got to get to work on it. Well, I'm loving these already. It's going to make my life way easier. If you'd like some step sliders for your rental, Jamie, tell them where to go. Go to rockslideengineering.com and use promo code MORR at checkout to get 10% off. All right, let's get back to work on the Bombi. One of you could get out and help me push. That's no fun. It pushes straighter than before. These <laughs> axles are way straighter than the other so ones. With the other axles on it, it was always steering. It was always turning. We get a lot of questions about why don't we just get tracks for the Jeep like Casey Liddell does. Well, I have an answer for that. The primary reason we don't do things exactly like Casey Liddell is, is because we work in an entirely different terrain, in an entirely different weather environment. We're either going to be in no snow or really deep snow. And the tracks, tracks on a Jeep won't do 12 feet of power. They just, they won't do it. Also, the time it takes to change them. It takes an hour plus to swap tracks on, and then an hour plus to swap them back off. So... Yeah, um, to have a dedicated snow vehicle is pretty valuable. Yeah. I was talking to Rory about this, talking to Paul. If I went to work, like all of a sudden found myself in Rory's work area, I would have to adopt a lot of what Rory does, probably most of the way that Rory does it. Same with Casey Liddell. If you dropped me there, I would have to adopt most of the way he does things. Of course, I'd have my own way of doing a few things, and that's fine. Different people do different things. But everybody's building a rig to match the environment that they're in, and that's what we're doing with this. Casey, love you, man. Rory, love you, man. Paul, love you, man. Robbie, you do some recoveries. We love you, too. BSF Recovery, you know you guys are always going to be the greatest. So Matt, you thinking about putting a diesel in this? Nope. What about a V6? I just had one. I took it out. What about an inline 6? What about a 4? Why an LS? Tell us why you want an LS. Oh, why do we LS? There's two kinds of car people. People that build their stuff and people that buy their stuff. The people that build their stuff are who I'm talking about. Of the people who do build their stuff, there's two types of people. People who want the simplest, most reliable, most effective engine to drive their things around, and people who are more purists and want to stick with brand loyalty. I am not that second one. I'm the first one. I want the simplest, easiest. And even if you think I should put a Hemi in this, you got to admit, the smart move is an LS. What did the Bombi come with? It came with a 54 horsepower, four cylinder Ford Industrial Flathead and a manual transmission. Okay. So an LS will modernize and make this thing much simpler and easier to drive, yep. maintain, run. It'll be the same engine that's, well, effectively the same engine in the Wrecker, effectively the same engine in the Morver, effectively the same engine in all the other vehicles we're going to so be building in the future. Lighter, more fuel efficient, way more power, adapts to modern transmissions. 
Yeah. Like, and hopefully the brakes will be able to hold the, those wild horses at bay when we need them at bay. But when we unleash them, we want them to just go. Hey, Peanut. I can't wait to take Peanut on a powder job oh, and, have yeah. her, and have her jump out and, just, and she'll just disappear. Peanut. Yeah. I'm super excited to have the snow cap back and ready for this winter and it's going to be more awesome than ever. What's going to be awesome about it is I'll actually be able to let somebody else drive it. Well, I was able to drive it. I drove it. Yeah, but I mean like Everybody. not have to worry about you. Yeah. I'm dying. Like, oh, is she going to turn it around? I don't know. So are you really going to use this thing in the summer? Will yeah. this really have summer capability? So we need yeah. it's going to have It's going to have the biggest big block dual pass radiator that I can fit. Well, it's going to be the biggest one they make because I've got nothing but room. Did I, you ever use the old version of this in the summertime? No. Ever? No. No. Did you get it on the sand even in the winter? The only time we've driven it not on snow was like in between the patches of snow. Yeah. Okay. Basically. So. And in the yard. But the new track will be capable to go on dirt, mm -hmm. sand, mud. I don't know if you saw it or not, but I think this is super cool. I am super happy with the progress that was made. So this thing's rolling right along. Literally. Thanks for watching. Well, they're not helping with that.